are the images the world can't forget. The immediate aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, a time when the water was still standing, and the people desperate and dying from injury and disease, and crying for help. With limited facilities and personnel and supplies, victims were being treated in makeshift military mash tents like this one. It was a help, but not nearly enough. It was during this time that an offer for assistance came from across the water. It came from Cuba. The Cuban government extended this formal offer to U.S. officials, notifying them that Cuba was prepared to send 1,586 doctors with 36 tons of medical supplies within 36 hours' time. They said that they were watching these images and they just wanted to help, and fast. The offer was ignored. It prompted this response later from Fidel Castro, who said this, it hurts to think that maybe some of those desperate people trapped by the water and at death's door could have been saved. It's a harsh lesson for those whose false pride and mistaken concepts led them to decide not to respond. Right now, Cuba has about 20,000 doctors deployed to 80 countries around the world, helping the desperate and the needy. Cuba prides itself on its medical capabilities and its free health care system. It's that system that has lured nearly 100 American medical students here to the Latin American School of Medicine in Cuba. Their deal is simple. They study, they learn, and they practice in Cuba for six years. In exchange, they'll earn their medical degree free of charge but not without a few inconveniences and hardships along the way. Because I assembled I three of these students no to talk to me about that. What's it like for you here? Anybody? Uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. Um, the opportunity to study medicine, the opportunity to study medicine in a country um, that not many uh, people from the U.S. have uh, an opportunity to come visit. Um, and the chance to study medicine in a place that believes in universal health care. I mean, it's, there's a whole mix of things that makes it a very exciting experience. Yeah, um, any restrictions based with all of that while you're here? I mean, there limits on what you can do? Well, limits, I'm going to talk about limits. Um, in terms of my mother coming here, she had a difficult time with the government getting here. Um, our parents had a hard time visiting our friends or whomever because of the blockade. What's, what's that like? You're separated from your family, from your friends, from everybody, really, that you know back home. What's that like? It's not easy being separated from your family. I'm the one to tell you about that because I know, for me, it's a very hard struggle, but I know it's something that I have to give up in order to be a, to become a doctor. But isn't that typical for any college or university student anywhere? They all have to leave home to come study. Well. What I, what I developed here, what was interesting for me, is um, that we, we're a family. This is my family. Arlene is, a matter of fact, I live with her. Um, this is my sister, and that's my brother over there. Like, we have our own family here. We develop a close bond because we live so close, and we're all we have out here, so. Give me your, your honest assessment, your honest assessment of the quality of the education you're getting here. For me, I think it's it, it's uh, above par. I mean, because of the the uh, focus on patient care, um, studying is very rigorous. The, the the academics are extremely rigorous. Um, we're, you know, there's no difference in people who I know in terms of talking to other medical students who I knew back in the states and the experience that I'm going through right now in terms of the amount of hours that we have to study. Um, how much pressure uh, they put on us to make sure that we know the material and the content. Um, I, you know, I, I believe that, and, and I think that it, it, the proof is in the pudding in terms of you see how healthy the population is here in Cuba. And also, you know, learning side by side by doctors because they, they actually um, promote and encourage us as students to go into a clinical setting and seeing how well doctors are interacting with their patients. I, I want to come back to that. But overall, how would you rate the quality of the Cuban health system? Is it, is it better than you expected, about average, or perhaps worse than you expected? Well, I can't say worse. I can't, I can't even put that in the, the equation. Um, I, I have to say it's great. I have to say it's great. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I really don't, I really can't say anything more, um, but it's good. Okay. And All you I can, can say about it, it's free. And you don't <laughs> get that everywhere. It's free. <laughs> You yeah. just walk into a hospital and it's free. And doesn't, doesn't that, does that alone make it worth it for you? The fact that, because let's face it, I mean, this is a very expensive proposition to go through training and education to become a medical doctor. Well, the fact that I'm getting training for free, it's worth it for me. Plus, I'm getting a stipend on top of that. Yeah, what's your stipend? 100 pesos. I'm getting paid to become a doctor, basically. <laughs> um, you get 100 pesos, not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money, but... What about the hardship of being here? Because, this, as you say, uh, there are a lot of challenges here. There's a lot of poverty here. Tell, talk to me about your personal hardship just in being in this place. Well, the personal hardships, living in a room with, how is it, 17, 18 females? It was rough. It's still rough. But it's a, it's a, it's a bonding experience, too. And I have other people living in my, my room um, from different parts of the world. 17, 18 people, who gets first dibs on the shower? <laughs> you wake up early. You wake up yeah. early. Do you have hot water every day? Um, we have a, uh, no, there's no hot water, but nobody that's has that's, that's different, though. That's something you sacrifice for a free education. What else? Hot, no hot water? What else do you sacrifice? <laughs> privacy. Privacy? Privacy is privacy. That's a big one for you. I mean, for a lady. <laughs> yeah, of course, I understand. Uh, anything else? You know, you get used to it. I, I really, you know, I don't. I, you didn't stop thinking in terms of hardships, because if, if you think about, you know, what you're missing, then Oh, through all, through all of that and in your learning process, are you having some fun? Of course. Yeah? yeah? Of course. Yeah. You make your own fun, too. Mucho, 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 mucho entertainment? <laughs> Not as a medical student. Not as a medical student. <laughs> There's so much fun you can have as a medical student. Um, uh, talk to me about um, what you hope for. Uh, when you leave here, let's face it, uh, at some point, if all goes well for you, you will be in professions back in your communities that need help. Talk to me about your community. You want to go into cardiology? Well, I what do you go, hope to do Of there? course I want to go back to Newark. I love Newark, and I believe Newark is, is definitely a place that needs some help. Um, to give back to my community in any way possible, especially, of course, medical care. A free um, medical care, I think that's the best gift you can give to anyone. But you want to work with children. That's important yes, to you. Yes, I do. I love children from the very beginning. What I would like to do or like to be is an example. An example to, in terms of other children, if, if you know, I can come out of my house um, living in the Fordham area of the Bronx and some other, you know, and a young person sees me in, you know, as a doctor, that would be fulfilling for me. When you finish here and you're out in your communities and doing great things, that will happen one day. But for now, are you apprehensive about that? Are you excited about that? Or are you downright scared about that? I'll start with you. <laughs> it's okay um, for, the, well, for either answer. Well, you know, answer. I am scared. I am scared, but that's what's gonna push me forward. You know, um, I believe going back home is one of the best things that I need. That's one of the best um, goals for me, going back home and showing everybody that I can do it. Throughout my fears, I can do it. It can be done. And you? I am scared too, I'm very scared, especially <laughs> about the exams, the steps. But for me, after I'm done through all of this, I think the exams are just like the easiest thing to come around and for me to get my degree and just, you know, go back home and help children in my community. And Joaquin? Um, I'm, I'm actually not scared about what type of doctor I'm going to be after this experience. I think that, you know, we're trained and given all the tools to become fine physicians um, back in the States. I, I'm more, uh, I, you know, not worried, but apprehensive as to what the situation might be as to how we're received coming from Cuba um, into the medical environment in the United States because there's been you know very because of the political pressure and the uh, kind of you know trying to gain acceptance into that world. <laughs> good luck I'm expecting big things from each of you. Thank you. Good luck to you and good luck